So hello everyone and thanks for joining in. Hope you enjoyed the yesterday uh, as a GDC and you'll enjoy the rest of this nice event. Welcome to Smart Game Assets. Um, first, an overview outline of what we're going to talk about today. So first, I'll give you an uh, introduction about myself. Uh, who's this guy? And uh, first, and then after that, uh, a description of what the smart assets are, what, what, we're, what we're gonna talk about. Then we will review some samples and uh, uh, important factors uh, for designing your smart assets, and then some resources and links. Just uh, very, try to make it quick, and just like I, I talk so quick and fast, so don't, like at the end, uh, if you have any questions, just hit me up. Uh, thank you very much. So who is this guy? So I'm Cyrus and um, I love everything to do in real time, uh, real time rendering I mean. Uh, I don't say games specifically because you know, most of you know like these days even movies and animations gets rendered in real time engines. There are heaps of experiences get, get made in uh, real, uh, real time engines either Unity or Unreal. So I love them all. I, love, I, I don't want to sit down and render for like uh, 24 hours. I, I, I don't like that. I love everything to real time and specifically VR. VR is my passion. Um, so I started developing games and learning 3D uh, back in 2006 um, with uh, Ogre 3D at that time uh, with the help of uh, one of my friends who was programming. So I was doing the 3D art bit and he was doing the programming uh, and it works out perfectly. It, it went on for seven years. Uh, we grew up to like 12 ninjas, we were cranking up games, we released four games on Steam and two games on App Store. It was a good time till uh, 2014 I decided to move to New Zealand. Uh, I started working for Gameloft in Auckland. Uh, after Gameloft uh, shut it down, a couple of studios here and there, uh, till I made my dream come true and joined Weta Game Shop to work on Dr. G augmented reality game on Magic Leap device. That was such an awesome time beside awesome talented people uh, that I've never experienced before. Uh, I learned a lot during my uh, VETA days, learning VFX uh, for games beside gurus like Simon Baker and learning art uh, beside uh, masters like Steve Lambert. Uh, the whole team was wonderful, uh, heaps of good people and Above that, I was learning 3D printing, how to do molding, how to paint the sculptures with airbrush uh, on the Veta floor. There were like, so many kind and talented people, uh, very keen to share, and I tried to absorb as much as I can. So, but after three years and a half, the making a, a small rad game with a small team was so tempting that I resigned from Weta and um, my dream job basically, I resigned from it and joined that small team of five in Amsterdam. Uh, for past two years, we are cranking up um, we are in the process of cooking something, uh, which we, we believe it's rad, uh, with some rad people, uh, uh, I would say. Um, but about the game itself, I cannot say so much about it. It's still like a big secret, as you know, skating is like, uh, Tony Hawk is there, so who's going to like, compete with that? So yeah, it's a little bit like um, uh, uh, freaking us out as well. All I can say is, yeah, it's a skating game. So... It has a little bit of cherry on top of it, so uh, we'll see. Uh, but we were a small team and I know a little bit Houdini. Uh, so from the early on, we decided to use Houdini and help this small team to be able to create the whole, com uh, whole like 3D game in Unity. And huge amounts of levels, huge amounts of assets needed to be done. Uh, so and all uh, the whole key uh, for us was to create uh, using these smart assets that I'm going to talk about uh, today and uh, be successful in the whole production phase uh, of developing this game. 
do a little bit of description about these photos. That's me just playing games and going to sleep. That's, uh, that's usually what happens. And the other one is just back in the days when first uh, they released an SDK on iPad. You can do like tracking. Uh, I was just so happy. Just like you could just go, I brought all my models and just like the animation, go to my friends and just show and try to be funny. Uh, and then yeah, DK2 uh, back in the days when it was uh, a thing. Uh, I, I, I had one and just tried to make experiences in Unreal with that. And recently, these are my recent skills that I acquired. Just uh, I'm able to hold a little uh, doggo with my nose. <laughs> uh, and then I'm teaching like our little cat, uh, Shimshak Houdini. And it's, it's, it's in good progress, uh, going well. Uh, some of my artworks, like uh, I started learning like how to uh, like uh, sculpting clay, painting uh, like either models or traditionally making masks, like bringing stuff in Unreal. Like I, I do everything, but at the end of the day, like it's either like in real time uh, or it's in physical. Uh, I don't do like rendering that much. I do uh, sketches like of effects that I'm working on. Um, uh, my proficiency is mostly visual effects and uh, creating real-time effects, uh, but um, because of the Houdini, this talk is coming, there's nothing VFX, it's mostly assets and creating smart assets. So smart assets, uh, what are the smart assets? The smart assets are... Uh, we call them smart assets. Uh, they, I mean, the general name is HDA, Houdini Digital uh, Assets. But I love to make them, uh, give them this like smart asset uh, word because they're more than just a 3D model. With these pipelines, you can assign any scripts, any gameplay scripts to, to your meshes on the fly while you're creating them inside, the, inside Unity uh, or Unreal Engine. And um, this is important for me to point out here that all you're seeing here, like this, like I'm, I'm, this project was done in Houdini, but everything working here uh, and just we created works in Unreal too. Uh, but the scripting part of it, the C sharp scripting part of it, needs to be swapped with uh, like Blueprint in Unreal. But the rest, everything works. It's all the same. If you like it, and if you work with Unreal Engine, you can just try it in Unreal. Um, and at the end of my talk, I will point that on real Unity a little bit more, uh, going to details. But these are these are game ready assets, meaning game designer and environment artist can hit the play after dropping these assets, and voila, uh, there's no need to someone sit down and put physics like colliders around them. Someone sits down and put the scripting attached to them, uh, so you can either like for some assets that uh, you can see over there, like a, a ramp that's going up. You can design like gizmos of cameras, so the player will go on uh, onto them. The camera will be switched automatically, or any audio can be attached to them, and it's all automatic. There's nothing needs to be done further than tweaking a curve and you know, a couple of parameters on the side. We'll get into it uh, in more details. Um, this, uh, these assets, um, they all will be like 90%, if not 100% done art-wise, uh, because we can use tri-planner materials, or we, ac we can actually unwrap them like on the fly in our in Houdini and have the unwrapped model at the very end of the uh, you know, the very uh, end results. And inside Houdini, we can just assign materials to them. So when you have the model and the asset inside Unity, it's automatically material will be assigned to them as well. So you don't even need to search for material and design your material. Everything is sorted for you. I mean, you have to sort it once and then the rest of the project, it will be sorted. Um, having one tool uh, is uh, an another good part of having one tool to create these assets for you is along the whole game, you will have the consistency of your models uh, apart from how fast you can generate all these models. Um, so, um, during this past two years, I created uh, a bunch of tools for, uh, for the game. I demonstrated some of them here. Uh, first one uh, is, which is the most important, I think, as it's in a skating game, is uh, a uh, ramp generator for, for the game. So with the ramp generator, we, we have the option of uh, quickly creating uh, 90 degree precise uh, uh, precise ramps. You can just like swap the swap the sides and it gets concave or convex. Uh, if you don't want to create like a big ginormous ramp uh, and just corner is enough for you. I'll just close this one. And if I 
accidentally once click on those and we said like sorry for that like but it happens i know it, while i was trying like trying to do it, it happened a lot it's just we're not gonna watch ads and stuff anyways so this is the first option of you can create like uh create like 90 degrees inside and then i um i created this one which with just a curve so this is an editable curve inside unity the moment you can uh, you can uh, as this, you can see we have knobs here that you can uh, spawn like the back corner filler so when it goes to the wall in the corner you can have just like you don't need to just go back to maya and model it come back once you calculate it and it's all in uh, houdini sitting there you just have the tick box and whatever the uh, radius will be that will be uh, um, it's up to you you want it or not uh, you can just turn it on and off uh, and it's not like something is sitting there you worry about performance no it's just completely get deleted um, so this is like like there, there are a lot of features that uh, we can add to this like you can add the footer uh, metal footer or you can remove it or the metal edge on the, on the top or later i'll show you, you can just have the whole uh, ramp can have like all the um, the metal uh, edge edge work to uh, be done. Uh, so here I, I just quickly like created this mesh. It's just like loop. It's just like a pool, uh, uh, skating pool. Uh, here's the parameters we can tweak. Uh, there are some like as you can see some calculations going on. But like when you're like developing, you can just like assign the, the you can move the stuff around and you can uh, get the uh, result that you want. Uh, the top bits of the ramp is tweakable totally and then this this bit that i was talking about the physics and all the jazz it's all created uh, on the fly so what i will do i will create all the physics uh, and then our programmer will have uh, the connection c sharp scripts uh, he did for us uh, that's sitting uh, and by hitting that setup at the bottom that what happens that the c sharp scripts goes and creates all those uh, other um, elements that these assets uh, need to be game ready because the uh, skater have to come in and go up the ramp and we need the physics there all this stuff uh, is gets created in this here and it gets connected with the gameplay uh, and then like the density of this mesh is all under control here we can just have the uh, how much the density of this mesh uh, the collider uh, like apart, like the mesh itself definitely but the collider uh, at the same time you can control everything uh, here i'm showing that i can drop that uh, resolution of that mesh and I have a simpler mesh but specifically for this because the skater goes up and we have a movement we need the higher resolution for the collider rather than the ramp uh, the mesh itself um uh, other stuff that uh, uh, i will show you this like you can optimize it, these assets uh like for performance so for example if these assets have to sit like towards the wall you don't need the back faces so you you will see all these uh, optimization stuff in your tool so when you're working in engine like you're already doing creating something optimized uh, and according to your needs of course uh, just i'm um, ticking tick boxing on and off like the edges and, and creating back the uh, physics and there is there is one um, reason that um uh, the colliders are not uh, they're not there all the time i will talk about it later during the, the talk so and then here i will jump into houdini and show you how how uh, houdini side of the stuff is working and but the, the connection if uh, i might have skipped that bit it's just a plug-in houdini engine that you install on, on houdini uh, on in unity it's just a plug-in it's and it's for free and it gets uh, it, it gets to read this uh, tools that you get uh, create uh, you can create with houdini um and uh, i will show here Yeah, all these scripts uh, is attached to one single point in space. So there's no, no geometry, but you, in the moment you pack a node and then assign uh, the stuff that you want uh, with attributes that uh, with attributes to this node, unity sign, it will read and assign it. So for example, here, I'm assigning an attribute of the layer that I want this object to be in. So I don't even need to, when I'm dropping that ramp in unity, I don't even need to go and set the layers because we can do it all pre everything uh, already done so and we, we can make sure that it's consistent all through the project so this is like layering or tagging this stuff and this is like the grind manager scripts get attached in there uh so i think he skipped a bit uh, okay so 
and this this bit is handling the grind uh how how the grind works so i don't know you guys if you are familiar with the skating games the the grinding bit of like this like the place that you can player will grind and we need to have like a skill line in unity to uh, for gameplay purposes to know when the player can grind on them so all, uh, we, we create all those splines here as well so the moment we change the mesh everything will be updated how this get how this gets generated is everything starts with this uh, curve and um, it, from houdini i'll tell uh, uh, that he, oh this curve is editable so when i'm dropping the tool in unity uh, it, oh, you, you you could see i can edit this curve but nothing else from the mesh uh, it, this tool was uh, interesting creating this was interesting because you cannot have the uh, create this ramps with just like a simple bevel and for these corners and you have to calculate your own bevel uh, according to how much the radius you want uh, this uh, uh, this curve to be so you need to do a little bit of like wakes wakes is a language that like Houdini uses it's not very uh, it's not hard to pick up at all if your unity is if you know C sharp, uh, you, you can easily uh, get to know uh, the tool. This is so basically this is bare bone of this tool, how it works, and then it, it then when we have that curve, we just need to sw uh, sweep the curve with the intersection, which all the parameters you expose, you can control the size of that uh, section, and then it gets uh, swept around, uh, and then just you need to just like patch the beginning and end, and everything gets unwrapped, uh, and at the end you you have the mesh inside. Uh, game engine uh, unity uh, next one next one is the barrier generator uh, for the barrier generator uh, it has a lot of options so first of all uh, it we can have like uh, this curve that we are editing either to be like a polyline which is like straight lines i mean or bezier like we can be, we, uh, i expose this drop down because the game designer wanted to say oh if what if i want to have like straight ones and i don't love this like curvy ones what do you got to do i said okay i will just, uh, expose that for you easy uh, this and this uh, uh, you can just create this easily rather than just imagine like if you don't have this tool the game designer or environment artist needs to sit down and just copy 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 and you have this ginormous amount of mesh sitting but here you're dealing only with one mesh one draw call easy um, uh, there's options that uh, we, we, we added uh, for the top bits like the, the chicken wire you can just uh, get rid of that or the barbed wire on top I just disabled the barbed wire on top uh, and just then you can add like noise and as you can see because everything is procedurally generated I will handle the unwrapping of the textures on this barbed bar wire you scale up the height everything is still working um, no need to go back to my uh, do anything else so now I switch it to uh, be a uh, uh, polygon uh, polyline uh, and then adding at the be between there are heaps of options you can uh, control and at the same time like the i i just uh, tick box the collider that i want the collider hit the setup and all these uh, uh, colliders get generated here and everything is tweakable the density of the colliders uh, all, all of that and if you just disable like everything will goes automatic so even when, the moment you disable the tick box because it's all switched and it's all, it's all in unreal uh, in houdini the moment i disable the barbed wire on top it means that we, we want to grind on top of this so the grind line will automatically appear or if i get rid of all of them then we need two grind lines on the uh, this concrete uh, uh, barriers to be escapable so then just they they create it instead and the moment to, i uh, edit this and i'm happy with it to do the skating on it i hit the setup everything all the gameplay uh, bits get created so this bit i'm showing you that uh, specifically this asset it's not i'm not creating all these tiny little meshes on the fly because that makes the tool a bit uh, uh, slow uh, and i will talk about how how to make your tool fast uh, further in a couple of um, slides but this this tool is using just a chain node in, in houdini to just arrange this all these meshes together so these meshes are sitting inside the unity and you this tool is using them uh, what's the good point about it because i can easily drop down the triangle count of this or whatever i can sweep these models and then all the tool is just automatically reads from them and it's just works um, you have to do the these are these are embedded mesh inside the tool so after i do this bit i'm just tweaking them and dropping the triangle count of them and i'm uh, because it's embedded i just need to reload it inside my tool so then i rebake inside unity everything gets updated as i was showing this is basically the tree uh, of uh, 
how this uh, barrier generator gets created. So now I hit the re rebuild and all the meshes get replaced and everything is just optimized. So next tool. At the beginning, go legs. Yes. So next tool is the power pole. Like in all the skating games, we have to create these power poles in the streets. And uh, gameplay wise, we this is this is some asset that we needed, and like it's gonna be like such a painful uh, uh, task to do for an environment artist uh, to sit down and model each them, place them, add this tiny. But when you got the tool, when you got the smart assets, you can just like put these curves, and then everything works. All everything will be handled. All these even you can add like all the set dressing inside uh, your tool. Uh, which you can see here just these hanging shoes just like this is a dressing one cool thing about this tool was uh, the branching ability so i, I added this branch uh, this is a branch so the environment artist or game designer can just make the brand branching happening and it's just i'm deleting this uh, center point uh, for the, the previous tool and i duplicate the tool and i just like to have the normal version so now i have the um, uh, branching going on and then i'll, I'll Play just with a couple of parameters that's not a very fancy tool it's it's just a couple of parameters to be controlled like all, how many of the uh, isolator we want how many of the uh, racks uh, racks of power lines we want to have um, and everything works instantly i can just literally after i hit the setup and you, you would see the grind lines will appear i can literally hit play and just with this with my uh, skater goes up and just uh, grind on these lines uh, no need to do any further work okay but the the most tedious uh, one uh, for like environment artists to create is just the stairs like it's, it's such a pain like creating them over and over right so why not to create a tool for them so this tool is like a general tool uh, that you can create any type of uh, stair uh, stair and staircases um, I expose the control of each each side of like uh, right and left and the middle you got the control you can just like delete each each part or uh, have them and tweak them so this is the same like i can just easily bring the wall up uh, bring the height up from the stairs and i have the wall or the bottom one like i can if, if you want to skate underneath yeah it's doable or if not we just like put it on, all down on the ground uh, I, here i'll just get rid of the middle part and uh or I put it back in changes change the stuff for this like wooden planks get like generated automatically as well we have the option to select like which side of the stairs we, we want this to be able it's like a gameplay thing that our game designer wants like uh like if you go there and you miss these likes you get punished by just tap, 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 going down it's it's, it's not good uh, the camera shows so. anyways but if you go like uh, on this woods it's it's uh, way better like and that's like a, a reward so, so uh, such an asset that like, you, you can create it on the fly is still I should uh, I, uh, I just like unticked like the side one so if this is sick it's gonna go into the wall what's gonna happen to the meshes and they're gonna get a lot of like light map and we, we do the light map baking it's gonna be like a ton of like space in the light map so you can just like untick it I don't want that wall get rid of the mesh uh, more optimized uh, and this is like a fancy thing that uh, uh, like after I created this tool our designer was just like oh can we just have multiple of these stairs connected because uh, okay let's just, let's see so and at, at the end of the whole tree because everything goes modeling like it, it's like non-destructible i just needed to add like a symmetry and expose like the parameter of that uh, like where the point of the symmetry uh, symmetry is uh, and where what is the direction of it and automatically everything works like all the ground lines get created everything works perfectly um uh, you, you can create some fancy like uh, uh, stairs with this uh, and that's that was just I, I hit the setup all this stuff gets created and um, even with the UV unwrapping all this stuff you can expose uh, to your knees like so here like I, I have all the all the parameters of the UV exposed I was, I was playing with the uh, board uh, wooden panels over there and then like some of the unwrapping bits here this this was basically the whole tree of how this gets generated um and like here i'm talking about how uh i want to talk about how we create these grind lines and how we uh, houdini and unity talk with each other 
because the whole pipeline uh, is uh, the whole modeling is procedurally get modeled i can easily like when when i'm going through the modeling phase i know what i want to do so i just assign like attributes to these meshes so later down the line when i have my model i can get rid of some the one that i want or i, I just like use them in uh, some manner or another here because i knew like all these like top bits and middle bits they they are grindable i can easily isolate this group turn them into curve and then pass pass it to another node that node what it does is here in this uh, loop that you can see here uh, i go through each each curve in the, that uh, for loop and i save the positions of these uh, vertices of this curve as a detail attribute and all you need to do after after this is going through and adding these positions of these curves with just like a separator in it is all in a string you save it in a, uh, as an attribute uh, here in in unity and the c sharp script will read that will say okay uh, what are the grind points or this is the list of i i come to the slash because the mesh changes oh so this is a new grind node so these grinds won't be like connected all together um this is basically how how it goes and once you do something like this for the grind on this tool, then um, you can have it on all of other tools. So it, it, it makes it so easy to expand uh, if you're modeling this. Uh, then this is another bit uh, of like modeling. So uh, there was a question like our environment artists came up and say, oh, when we put this, if, you, if I put this together, uh, because there are 90 degree here, uh, uh, they, they will be like Z fighting, they, they go together, you can imagine, and it's three molars. Uh, so I added just like a quick, like 40 degree cut. So everything gets cut over there. Uh, um, and then right now, I go, if I want to connect this to another stair, I just go and select a 45 degree cut and it will be cut so I can duplicate it and attach it and everything is just seamless works. Uh, so I, I just quickly created this model um, and I design it. Yeah, everything is easy. The grind, grind lines all sorted out and then voila the asset is done and then you can fine tweak them and these are stuff that like a, a game designer will rule out how what to do how is this slow what you're going to do and that was just a sample so this was the stage generator and then we got to the wood panel wood panel is, is very very simple uh, but we, we just needed a ramp, but the complexity of the model that we create is just uh, it's so tedious for a 3D modeler to sit down and model it. So I'll, I'll pick it up and say, yeah, I'll create a tool for you. No worries. Uh, easy. Uh, the same process is uh, going on because we have all these like trees of like in Houdini working on so we can easily like get a new version and do stuff with it. So it's just like you define your curve and all this stuff will get created around it, physics objects, everything. Uh, this is this is very simple simple assets. I mean these these are like I mean at any point if you're happy with this mesh you can uh, you can hit the bake here you can see you, you bake it as a game objects you get rid of all the Houdini bits of it and it's like a single up single assets that's sitting in your project. That that's and then you can duplicate I mean copy it around create a new one copy it around create a new one I haven't demonstrated that bit in this video. Uh, I realized in the car driving here that that was a good point um, to mention. So I mentioned that. So it's like, oh, these are all one assets. What are you talking about? Like, but yeah, you, you have to see, like you can create multiple uh, thousands of them easy in like 10 seconds. Uh, okay, then, I mean, after all these like modelings that are static, uh, I wanted to uh, show like how the Houdini like simulation power you can utilize inside your, um, in, for, for your game. So here for this tool, like our environment uh, artists wanted to just put some drippery like stuff around going like on boxes and stuff. And uh, I've, like that, and that was when the vellum, the new vellum stuff came out. So we jumped in and uh, uh, I created this tool. Uh, so you, as you can see here, uh, uh, I can define any object in Unity that you create. Like I created these two box cubes and there's one cube underneath it. You can define them as like, oh, this is a pin or this is a collider. And the rest of the, and then the position of the assets in, uh, in your scene will define the uh, floor. Um, so I, I quickly switch. This is the shader for the wind, like it jiggles in the wind. And, and now I switch to my debug uh, shader, uh, shader to show uh, 
to show that bit, like how, how we handle that jiggling bit. Uh, so that jiggling is just a displacement in the wind, right? So, but the problem comes up like, oh, this when it's attached to something or is sitting on the ground, it shouldn't move. So that, that part uh, get handled in Houdini. As you can see, these black parts just get multiplied, the vertex color multiplied in the shader by the displacement value and it gets zero and they don't move, uh, easy. Um, so this is the jiggling, but the video is so fast, you know? it's like, it's vibrating basically. So yeah, now I'm showing like the, how, how this is like basic stuff coming and this is the vellum node. You set up your, uh, your mesh here. I wish it was another uh, wireframe. So you set up everything, uh, or you define all your uh, pinpoints and colliders and all you need to do to, to work with this kind of like simulations fits vellum is you put a, uh, you have to put a time shift, a time shift node and then the frame that you want, it always comes out and shows one frame. So you don't see that simulation. You, you, you might notice that like when, when the simulation 30 seconds finished, you just uh, come up with one frame. That's why we don't want the whole simulation for it. We just want frame, we need one frame. So you define which frame you want, and then uh, it will be that, that will be the uh, single uh, output of the stuff. And the rest is because it's in Houdini, I can calculate the distance between all the meshes, the pinpoint and distance between all the other meshes and colliders and just uh, vertex color as black. I'm not doing anything like fancy in Houdini side for that. It's just a note. A lot of stuff in Houdini is like that. And you talk about like people get freaked out on how you calculate this stuff. And then it's just a note. It's already done. You just need to just note the notes, honestly. Uh, it's, it's, that's all. Um, so. Uh, okay, so what are the fact importance? So that was the, basically the majority of the tools. Um, so what are the important factors? Uh, my learning past you two years doing all this stuff. The most important thing is just you have to listen who is going to use this tool and just sit, sit down with them and just ask them what they want to do because it gets like so complicated and you might get dragged with doing something different and coming back say, oh, I don't want it to do it. So first of all, it, ask whoever is going to use it. You have to sit down and make the bullet points that what's this tool you know, going to do for you, uh, what you want outcome to be. And if it's even yourself, just sit down and bullet point, write it out. Um, and then an another thing is uh, don't expose everything out because you got every parameter in Houdini and like literally everything can be exposed in Unity, but don't do it because you, you, you will be happy like, oh, create this wonderful tool. I have 120 parameters to be controlled. It's amazing. You can do it. But you show it to the game designer and the environment artist. They will look at you and say like, ah, I don't want it, man. They get overwhelmed. See this old ginormous list of power. Like, just give them dimensions first, like height, width, that's it. Go for it, bro. Like, have fun. It's just go and enjoy yourself, make a your coffee. Because they're going to come back and say, oh, I want to do this. Can I? Can I? And say, oh, Yiki, uh, you open your Houdini, you just expose the parameter, and then that's done. Don't expose everything for them. They get overwhelmed. Your tool will never be used. Um, so that's one more thing. Another thing is it has to be fast. That was what I was talking about at the beginning. If it won't be fast, they would prefer like, uh, I mean, most like at some point, like the one of these tools I, I was created for the Ramplifier. The Ramplifier was this heavy ginormous tool because I created three versions of it. So you could instantly, I, I got rid of them because back then at the beginning, you could instantly with the tick box, make the whole ramp to be a concrete. And then you can make it like a tick box. It all will be like wooden panel but it was a slow so it takes like time and the game designer didn't like it so i took all of them out and it's like okay just just the wooden ramp is good for you for now so it has to be fast if it's not fast they're not using it like they would prefer just putting a pro builder and do their testing and then uh, i created a tool for you to be easy and you can use it and it's nice and slow how you can make it fast is uh, by this wonderful tool, uh, wonderful tool in uh, uh, Houdini. You just need to go uh, and uh, um, make this uh, performance monitor tab visible. And when you do that, you will have this uh, performance uh, monitor, which like a, it has like a start and record button. Uh, here I will show it to you. And when you hit the uh, start button, it starts uh, looking into all the nodes and Houdini is sitting there and give you feedback of how much each node took 
to cook. So you know in milliseconds which, which node in your hierarchy of generating this model is the costly one, is making the tool slow. Uh, here you will see. Uh, uh, the way you should do it is just make the last node visible. As you can see here, this node is uh, visible. And then go at the beginning node uh, as I went and make a change. So that makes the whole tree to go uh, to run. And as you can see here, this node here is, becomes red. This means that this is so time consuming. What is it? It is actually doing the light map channel too. Do we need it? No. So just get rid of it. How we get rid of it? We just put a switch at the beginning. So the, the designer, the environment designer, does, we, when we moving those curves to have a ramp, we don't need the light map channel 2 to be calculated every frame. But because it's very expensive, it goes and see all the meshes and tries to uh, like do the UV layout. It's, it's such a time consuming thing. You don't need it there. So all we need to do is just add a switch and it's exposed in the Unity. So when you're happy with your model, I'm happy. It's worse. Gameplay wise. Oh, awesome. Okay. Now you want to save the assets? Just tick box this. Then Unity goes to this uh, node. Then all this calculation will happen. Just 15 seconds. Okay, done. But you don't want a 50 second every time that you're moving that curve around. So this is where this, this comes very handy uh, and very useful. I went through a lot of like our tools and just add switch to whatever was was heavy. Just add a switch. It's another thing that makes uh, tools heavy is those collider ones. This is why I was saying that you won't see like whenever I change it, the collider won't get updated. It was like that, but it was a slow. So I get rid of it. And then the collider is a tick box at the end right, right now. And uh, yeah, it, it's at the end. You can just like add the uh, colliders uh, at the very end. Uh, okay. Um, okay, the limitations and caveat. This is the nagging part. Like, uh, so the support for um, Unity side is a little bit less. And it makes sense. Like uh, side effects got a very big connection with uh, Epic. So support over there is very, very wonderful time zone uh, we're, we're running a little bit behind on time so oh sorry okay um, um, um maybe i uh, sorry for that uh try to just talk so fast but it didn't work <laughs> um uh okay i mean uh, go play with these tools and you'll see there are there are problems as well good that i'm not pointing them out yeah and that's it some links at the be at, at the end that you can find uh, project check project titan it's wonderful and mangus larson from ascent game uh that came out recently like i don't know last year maybe he he puts a lot of his houdini tools on art station which is wonderful and basically that's it uh thank you very much uh, these these are all assets creating the whole scene is all houdini assets like the, you can do set dressing as well like the trees and all the jazz and the speakers so yeah uh thank you very much i'm sorry that you guys a little bit more thank you